Okay, welcome back, folks. We're going to continue our work on good time, and now we're going to shift gears to what S18 proposes to do. And the first thing, one of the first things it proposes to do is to rename good time to earn time, reduction of term. So it's earn time instead of good time. So Eric, if you can just quickly give us a real run through of S18, and um, we will come back to it in more depth when we don't have a couple bills up on the floor that <laughs> we need to focus on. <laughs> yes, I know. <clears throat> Committee's got a lot going on on the floor these days. I know, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can be brief and it's also, it's helpful that uh, uh, the committee again, I'm sorry, Eric Fitzpatrick, uh, back again with the Office of Legislative Council to uh, talk now about S18, which is entitled an act relating to limiting earned good time sentence reductions for offenders convicted of certain crimes. And uh, it's helpful, we can go through it pretty quickly, especially because uh, the committee got a good grounding earlier this morning in what the current good statute, the current good time statute does and how it works. So with that understanding in mind, I can, I can explain pretty directly what the proposed changes are in S18 to this current good time statute. So there are four main changes um, that S18 proposes to make. And the one, the first one is the one that the chair just mentioned, which is that it changes the name of the earned good time program to earned time. And I could, you may recall, I explained last time that the, at least the Senate Judiciary Committee had the perspective that uh, the question of whether someone was, um, had not, had not gotten any major disciplinary violations or had not been reincarcerated from the community really didn't turn on whether someone was good or not. And so they decided to, to get away from using that term and just call it earn time because uh, on the idea that it was something, a reduction that in sentence that the person was earning on the basis of whether they um, didn't commit a violation or get, or get uh, reincarcerated from the community. So that's change number one. Uh, change number two has to do, and I'm just sort of going in order on the bill uh, from the, from the uh, section one through uh, the very end of the bill. Uh, so the first one that you come across in section one has to do with victim notification. So again, we talked about that this morning as well, that there is some victim notification in statute already. But remember that victim notification is done by the department. That's done by DOC. The proposal from uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee and from the Senate, now the bill is passed, sorry, is that, uh, is that there's additional notice to the victim that is done by the prosecutor's office and that's done at sentencing. So in other words, it's an earlier stage of the process that a victim would receive notice uh, that uh, uh, this earn good time program exists or earn time if the, if the name um, becomes that, that the program exists and what, uh, what amount of time the offender might earn um, through the earn time program so that and how their sentence might be reduced. So that has to be, and there is an existing statute about certain uh, information that has to pr be provided to crime victims by the prosecutor. So that, that's already exists. And this just adds to that, that uh, list, another item that the prosecutor has to disclose to the victim about uh, the, the existence of the earn good time program and how much time that might result in uh, the offender um, having their sentence reduced. So that's piece number two. See a question there, I can pause if you like, if it, between each section, maybe that makes sense or, or each uh, change, I should say. Thank you, Mary. Um, so my question was on the first part, the name change. In various states, earn time and good time have distinct definitions. So earn time usually is through activity through prison programs where good time is a behavioral credit. So do we have that distinction in Vermont? Will there be an issue with the, with a name change like that if it's understood that in other states that there are distinctions in the definition? I, I don't think there's an earn time program in Vermont already so that there wouldn't be that ambiguity. Um, so that as long as you were clear that this was a, you know, Vermont only terminology, essentially, um, then you wouldn't run into that, that problem that you probably, as you say, we would run into in other states.
Eric, wouldn't, wouldn't it depend that we have defined what it is in section two, B? Uh, yes, so for purposes of, of the Vermont program, exactly, that you, you've uh, um, changed the terminology throughout, including how you define the program. So um, I think, uh, I think unless I'm not aware of it, I think this would be the only earned time program in Vermont. So you wouldn't have that, that ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're on section one. Yep. And this is notification of the victims. And the new language is at the bottom of the page. Did you go over that, Eric? I was yes. Little, yeah, okay, I was No, that's right, yep. That's just the piece I was just talking about the, because this is new, new victim notification, not by the department, but by the prosecutor at the, at the uh, sentencing stage of the proceeding. So it's much earlier on uh, than, than under current law. And uh, again, um, kind of, it's conceptually related to this carve out, which I'll get to in a moment, but that's part of the reason for adding that victim notification at an earlier stage in the process. So I flagged this when you came in earlier that the next to the last sentence on the page, how the earned time only affects when a defendant is eligible for parole consideration, but doesn't necessarily result in the defendant's release. I'm wondering, I flagged about furlough as well, because we'll still have some statuses of furlough that they would be eligible for not just parole consideration. And that was when it was, when you walked us through this back in February or whenever. And this looks just to be dealing with parole consideration because I know we're thinking of presumptive parole, but we still will have three classes of furlough that they would be eligible for. Oh, I see what you mean. So in other words, because, and this kind of goes to what Monica was talking about this morning as well, that the person becomes eligible for furlough when they reach their minimum, as well as becoming eligible for parole, whether it be presumptive parole or regular parole, and that um, that for full not, accuracy, full accuracy of the sentence, you might also want to say, earn time only affects when a def defendant is eligible for furlough or parole. Right. Because you're, that's a good point. Be, that, sorry, you'd, what? You'd be eligible for one or the other. Right. You're eligible for both. And here it's the same that the victim would be um, informed the victim of the maximum amount of earned time that would just go um, for just when the defendant, the inmate, is eligible for parole consideration. Yep. So at sentencing for the defendant, they're only going to look at when the person's eligible for parole, not when they're eligible for furlough. And that may have been the intent. I don't know. I don't think the furlough issue even came up that I recall. I think they were probably thinking of presumptive parole. Yeah, yeah. For that. And, um, and Jerry, you're on the, the next to last line of the first page, is that correct? We are on S18. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we need to go to our bills in and out of committee. And click no, no, I have that. I'm, I know, I'm... but some folks don't. Okay. Scott, hang on. So go to our, our in and out of committee, our bills in and out of committee and click on S18. But then where we are on S18 is at the bottom of the first page of the bill. Okay. Is mm -hmm. that right? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So the bill is in our committee and we do have it posted on one of our dates for the web page. Could be back in January or 1st of February, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's go to section two. Yes. So we've covered, remember I mentioned that there's four primary proposed changes to the good time statute that S18 makes. So we've covered the first two, change of the name and the expanded notice to victims. And so now we're on number three, which you'll see, uh, at least on my version of the document, is on page two. 
and, and in section two, uh, and now we're in the back in the the good time statute itself, and in subdivision B one, and this goes to the issue of remember I discussed this morning how uh, there's a list which was right there that we went through this morning in existing law B one of sort of the universe of, of offenders for whom the good time program is available. So and there's a list of uh, basically of folks for whom it is not available because the, the sort of fallback is it's available for all sentence, of, sentence offenders except for, and then it lists a few categories of folks uh, who wouldn't qualify. Remember we went through this morning, the existing ones, which was people on prob probation and parole, um, people who could get their term reduced pursuant uh, to this uh, work camp statute. And this next proposal, you'll see the underlying language. This was um, uh, a request made by the Department of Corrections. And this was to add a category of folks, which is offenders sentenced to serve an interrupted sentence. Now, uh, at the very end of the bill, I'll, I'll read down there so you can hear it, because that term is defined at the very end of S18. And an interrupted sentence uh, means a sentence that is not served continuously, including a sentence to be served in intervals or a sentence to the work group. So an interval sentence, for example, could be a weekend sentence. Again, the idea is someone's serving only a, a sentence that's served non-continuously, like in a weekend or on the work crew, which is only during the work day, doesn't really make sense for that person to also be earning good time at the same time. So I think that was uh, uh, something that the department realized during the rulemaking process. And so they made that request uh, during the course of S18 and that's why that piece was added. So I'll pause there for a moment because that's change number three. Change number three being the interrupted sentence. Exactly. Okay. And lastly, we come to the fourth uh, primary substantive change, and that is the all the new language at the end of the bill starts on my page four, goes over onto page five, and this is uh, what's been called the carve out. This is a a remember under existing law, the only types of offenses for which a person would be excluded from earning good time or earn time are life without parole. Remember, we went through that this morning. So it's only life without parole offenses that a person can't qualify for a good time at all. The proposal from S18 is essentially to add seven more offenses to that list retroactively, not going forward. And this is a crucial distinction here. This, only, this carve out only applies to folks who are in Department of Corrections custody and are inmates at the time that the bill is passed. Doesn't apply going forward. So if someone, let's just to pick a number and pick a date sort of randomly, but just for, for the sake of an example, let's say if the bill does pass, it passes on July 1st. Well, someone who is sentenced on August 1st for one of these seven crimes would still be able to earn good time or earn time. It's only someone who's already been sentenced and is already under DOC uh, supervision uh, for one of these seven offenses who would not be able to earn uh, good time going forward. Now, remember, I'm saying going forward because also, as we discussed this morning, the program's already been in effect since January 1st. So that group of people, and I think even Monica had even mentioned the number this morning, if I remember right, it was 290 something, close to 300, I think, uh, of people who who are, who are in DOC custody now and have committed one of these disqualifying offenses. But those folks have earned good time up to now and they will continue to earn it um, if we assume S18 passes. Again, not trying to assume it, but just for the purposes of discussion, if S18 were to pass, they would continue to earn it up until the time that uh, the bill passes and becomes law. It's only at that point that they would stop being able to earn it. And that's... Um, certainly a function of not being able to, uh, there's no legal ability to take away this good time that a person has already earned. So um, the bill makes clear that it does not do that. So that's the big picture discussion of how it works. The seven offenses, the seven disqualifying offenses are murder, voluntary manslaughter, kidnapping, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault of a child, and lewd and lascivious conduct with a child. So those are the seven offenses that were um, chosen in the Senate. And again, the way that would work is if someone is 
uh, has already been sentenced to, for one of those offenses and is in under DOC supervision for one of those offenses now, then they would be able to keep the earned time that they have up until the act S18 becomes effective. But after that, they wouldn't be able to earn any more, any additional earned time. And that's the essence of the way the carve out works. Questions from the committee? So we're gonna take more testimony on this um, and spend more time on it. Uh, Kurt? Uh, I, just, I assume Monica is still here. I'm just wondering if there's any, what her thoughts are is with, with, regarding an administrative burden for this change. Is this gonna make it that much more difficult to calculate good time and how difficult? Representative Emmons, do you want me to respond? Yes, okay. <laughs> so, um, hi, Monica Weber again, Administrative Services Director. So we, we're already working on this issue. We've been following S18 and um, we have been um, planning uh, what our process would be for identifying those people. As I mentioned, you know, we already know uh, that we have 297 people. Um, who may be, you know, be disqualified moving forward. Uh, so we would have to, you know, write our queries, develop our process to make sure that the, those people um, were excluded moving forward. So it's, it's, it's something that, that can be done. I think it can just be done once, um, more or less, and just carried over because after S18 passes, um, as representative, oh, as um, Eric said, people who get sentenced to those crimes um, would be eligible. I'm sure there's more complications there um, that you know will come up because they always do, um, but we'll just figure those out as we start, as we move forward. It should so, have passed. So because this is a sentence reduction, each time you actually reduce their sentence, um, once we get past July 1st or whenever this passes, you will have all those sentences reduced to where they're supposed to be. And so you don't have to even look at whether they were uh, fitting those crimes or not in the future, you would just reduce their sentence. No, you'd still have to find out, you'd have to track those people separately and not reduce their sentence, right? Correct. We would have to track those people sent separately and not reduce their sentence. Um, and I don't wanna get into all the complications around sentence computation and what may yeah. happen uh, in different scenarios, but you know, we'll, we would have to work that out um, within you know, our system to make okay. sure that we excluded those people. But you're not pulling your hair out saying, this is way out of line. We're gonna be doing this forever. So I guess we're okay then. Yeah, I mean, we're, I, I, we need to manage the program the, the way it's built um, um, as you all pass it and, and we'll, we will figure out how to do it. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, Karen? Yes, thank you. Um, so my question is regarding the, the carve out and the set list of crimes. And we don't need to necessarily answer it here, but my question is curious of like how those specific crimes were selected and how do we know like those are the ones to carve out if we're gonna carve out? Because what doesn't prevent us from, you know, a year from now hearing from, um, victims of a, a different subset of crimes saying, you know what, these folks should also um, be carved out. Um, so one of the questions I'm coming to mind is like, if we do this carve out, how do we know that we are getting it all? So we're not revisiting this every year. Cause I think to speak to uh, Monica's point, like that will be her having to readjust it every year in this calculation piece. So I don't know, Eric, if you have, information of how these crimes were selected and if we feel like this is gonna be it, or I guess we can never guarantee that. Right, well, your latter question, you're right. I can't, can't guarantee that. Um, but, uh, um, but the former question, it was a proposal from the Attorney General's office and they had a list of offenses in their proposal and the 
they went through them in committee in the Senate Judiciary. They, I think they, they took a couple of them out, actually. It was a, it was a larger list uh, when it came over. Uh, they took a couple out and they settled on these ones. Essentially, that was where that was how it all uh, happened in, in committee. So it is a possibility then that it could come up again. We could revisit this. Yeah, one never knows. Yep. We could also reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? So we will schedule more time on this with, um, I know the Attorney General's office wants to come in. So uh, we will schedule time with them um, as well as, uh, let me find my sheet of paper here, as well as notifying um, the Defender General that we are taking this up. Um, we have uh, a victim, a family that was victimized that would like to come in and testify. We also have Council of State Governments, Sarah Friedman, who has done some of the reinvestment to analysis on this proposal and um, what impact that would have on our justice reinvestment to dollars. And I'm trying to think if I have forgotten anyone. Of course, we'll have DOC in the room whenever we do this work. And um, and, um, and we're, we're gonna look at the list, Eric, of what Senate Judiciary, who they had in to testify and um, go through that list and, and make sure we cover all the basis for that. So we're gonna set up some testimony. I don't think it will be tomorrow. I think it will be starting next week because we have a full day on the floor <clears throat> tomorrow. We have judicial retention in the morning yep. uh, and we have a full day on the floor tomorrow. We'll have a full day on the floor on Friday. So we would start working on this bill um, probably next Tuesday afternoon at the earliest for that. So I just wanted to get the background information out for folks here. Anything else? And then we can start shifting gears back to our capital bill. Hmm. Anything else for folks? Anything you want to share, Eric? Anything? No, I think that's uh, that's uh, a good a good foundation for for uh, understanding where it's at, and then. Uh, Keep me posted what the committee needs. Let me know, and I'm uh, happy to happy to chip in as you go forward. Okay, Phil, we'll keep you in the loop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Anything else, good Monica? Luck. Good luck on the floor today, everybody. Oh, <laughs> thank you. We got a corrections bill on the floor today. We okay. got a big bill. So, yeah. speaking of that, with Monica, you might want to notify uh, Commissioner Baker and your crew that um, the DOC committee bill. It's 435, right? Is that the number? Correct. And I'm reporting on it. So yeah. just to watch on YouTube in case we get in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm sure we're tracking that, but I I will make sure that, that um it's on our calendars. Yeah, that's up for action today. Yeah. Yep. Right. Thank you. So I think we're done with the DOC and we will schedule time for you folks next week for that. So thank you, Eric, and thank you, Monica. You bet. Bye, everybody. We will see you. Okay. So, anyway, um, how are people feeling about their report, Scott? Well, I do have a question uh, about clean water, and okay. and how that. Is, is being paid for. Um, we have um, $11 million a year in a capital bill, but there's also money in, in, in general fund, right? So what, what is, our, what is our, uh, our total requirement um, under the agreement with EPA? And how does that break up between 
annual appropriations and capital bill. Can anybody enlighten me about this? I have no idea what our annual requirement is. It's 52 million, 52 or 53 million um, that's shared between the, the general fund and the capital bill. Um, and T bill. And T bill. I don't think there was any money in the T bill this year. I no. checked. Um, I don't know, Scott, how important it is for you to speak to the number, the, the actual I, 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 I'm not, I wasn't, well, I, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what I was going to say, but I, and I wasn't going to go into that detail. I just want to know. Sure. <laughs> so and we're going to get magic money, too. Mm -hmm. Sorry? And we're going to get magic money, too. Magic money? Yeah. Well, there's money that comes out of the Clean Water Fund. But and we're also going to get some of that stimulus money toward water. Uh, not yes, here. but that is up in appropriations. That's the Clean Water Fund. But we so that's have our magic money. Right. But we have committed within our capital budget for the next two years twenty two million to address our clean water requirements. And this and, is the breakdown. And um how is it uh, determined how much is going to be capital and how much is is, is general fund? Do I, I know I don't, I'm not going to if, if you look at our spreadsheet, we are saying 11 million this year and 11 million next year. No, no, I, yes. we are saying. Right. And then they live within those confines. Okay. My, my question is, it, the split between capital and, and, and uh, general fund, is that just, is that set or how is that determined? Uh, okay. Madam Chair, could, could, uh, can I say something? <laughs> the the best place to look, Scott, is the original treasurer's report, where she outlined the total commitments of the state towards that. I can send you a copy. That would be and great. Then she specifies over the next twenty years we need to spend this much money, so that's this much per year, things like that. Yeah, I, I know I saw that whenever that was, but um, thank you. That would, I wasn't paying that close attention back in those days. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. We have traditionally committed about over two years, about 20 to 24 million of our capital budget to go okay. towards the clean water portion. Okay. And these, right. these projects here are recommended by the Clean Water Board. Yep. No. Okay, thank you. So, okay, Karen? Yes, so um, I, th I think I'm feeling set. I am really taking to heart the piece of keeping brief and high level. So I haven't written out my points yet, but I feel like it's gonna be maybe a sentence or two for each section. Um, so that's helping me because I'm like, I can only say so much in that amount of time. The one question I have is, because I've been watching how other folks report their bills and they're doing it toward the bill saying, pointing to section da, 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 da. Are we using our spreadsheet more as the guide? Look at, so now I'm moving to section four of the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so yes on that, that's helpful. Just so I'm yeah. orienting folks to the right document. And mm -hmm. then two is um, my take is that we're not sharing any numbers. We're just saying like this section, would provide funding for blah, 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 but I'm not stating the exact numbers. Is that what correct? You, what you could say, Karen, you have, um, you can say when you get up, I have section, if you, because it's, I'm really gonna encourage people to work off the spreadsheet um, for, for the report, but I think it's really important for everyone to have our language with us as well. Yep. In case there's questions for backup. Um, what I'm gonna suggest is that people work off their spreadsheets. And then, so when you get up, you would say, Madam Speaker, I, I'll report on sections four, five, sections four through eight. eight. Um, section four deals with commerce and community development for a total of um, about 873,000 over two years. And that goes towards our major maintenance of our historic sites. And then we also are responsible for the underwater preserves, roadside history markers and unmarked burials. Okay. Section five 
is our building community grants program. This goes, these are dollars that go directly back into our community for small scale infrastructure, infrastructure projects. We have increased these um, to 600,000 each over two years. And these go towards projects for our nonprofits and our municipalities for items such as adult daycare centers, uh, parent child centers, uh, parks, recreational town parks, town recreational facilities um, could go also for historic preservation, historic barns. There is an application process for these uh, grants and there is a one-to-one -one match requirement and they really target small projects, capital infrastructure like roof, roofs, uh, boilers, HVAC systems and um, the the Grants are capped at 25,000. That's all you need to say. Okay, so just the total amount for the section. Perfect, I can do that. Sorry, and then can you just share, I don't expect this, that there's gonna be questions, but what is the statement? Like if you are asked a question and you're like, oh my goodness, I just need help. Can um, you like, say, I'd like a brief re recess? You can say, Madam Speaker, may I yield to the chair? Okay, perfect, great, that's all I need. Or if you think you have the answer, but you need to catch your breath, you can say, Madam Speaker, may we have a brief recess? Okay. I mean, last year I was reporting the Capitol bill and my cat decided to walk in front of me. And I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I, and I asked for a brief recess so I could move her. But usually if you really feel that you're starting to not, under not know the answer yield to the chair and hopefully I can bail you out. hopefully okay Bert? Uh, do we have things straightened out for section 27 or 28 uh we we do thank you Kurt for bringing this up um I emailed I spoke well I text um Bill Lippert about that and also we worked with the clerk of the house in terms of how to best do it and donahue is going to speak on it but not during our report of the bill you will just need to give a sentence for each one of those sections is really brief just a sentence and then after we've gone through um all the amendments i mean we've got we don't have any am amendments at this point to our bill. So once you get into debating the bill, then Ann Donahue is going to get up and speak to those two sections in depth. So you just need to give um, section 27 and 28. It's basically when we open up any state owned run facility that there needs to be a bed count done for the whole system and really looking at our community beds and needs. So you want me, you, you, so I do that. Um just at the end of my regular, Correct. end of my little period there. So yeah. we're not coming back to me. Once no, I'm done, then no. I'm done. With, okay. Once you're All done, right. you're Got done. It. So if you have language with, if you have a section that has dollars and then you've got policy in the back, yep. you do the policy. I think you're the only one for that. Yeah. Did so you I ask Anne to keep it brief? <laughs> uh, Anne's in her own world right now. <laughs> so okay. I do my policy, my policy ones, and then I do a quick sentence on 27 or 28, and then yield to Karen. Correct. Yeah. And we need, did you send that list out to all, you did, Sarah, right, about the yield? You did that on Friday, right? Who yields to whom? And that order stayed the same. There's no been no change in that. I'm gonna drop it in the chat. I sent it as an email, but I, I can drop it in the chat right now just so that while we're talking, we can all see it. Is that is that all right, Madam Chair? Yeah. I got too many sheets going on right now. Maybe this let's see if it does it work. Yeah. Can people see that? So I yield to Kurt. Kurt will yield to Karen. And when you yield, it's the member from, and then you say representative. So I will yield to the member from Colchester, Representative Taylor. When Kurt is done, he will say, I will re I now yield to the member from Essex, Representative Dolan. 
So when Karen finishes, she will say, I now yield to the member from St. Johnsbury, Representative Campbell. And Scott, you will say, I now yield to the member from Milton, Representative Morgan. And then Michael, you will say, and now I yield to the member from Springfield, Representative Emmons. Mm -hmm. and, and I should clarify at the bottom of, we, I sent this out before we got clarification from the house clerk about, um, we will not be yielding from the member from healthcare until after the committee does its whole. Well, bill. she will be doing that when we open up debate. Right, she, when, when the speaker says, um, Shall the bill be read a third time? Third time yeah. And then Anne will get up for that. So I can't emphasize enough to keep it simple. Um, and Marsha, do I see something from you, Marsha? Yeah, I was just a question. If anybody brings up the sinking of the Adirondack, are you going to take care of that? Um, I'll have to. Okay, I just, because I know it's out there. Uh, people are concerned. They have questions. And they may I, not bring it up, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that. Okay, they have questions. Might. Is it your caucus members that are having questions? Well, put it this way, some of their constituents are um, and I don't know if they listen to them highly or not. So they want to sink the Adirondack. No, not really. It's just like, why would you not want to? And I made the comment that we spend so much money cleaning up the water. Why do we want to put stuff in the water? Okay. Anyone that wants to give back up on that one, you're welcome <laughs> to do so. Thanks for the heads up. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that this caucus will give us some indication and quite often the caucus, the questions will be asked in caucus and then that really helps not having so many questions on the floor. And it's really hard to judge what people are thinking out there because we're not in the building. I'm sure there'll be some things on the middle sex. I don't think that has gone away yet for that, so. So are people feeling okay with their sections, Karen? Uh, yes, feeling okay. And um, this is a question I think that goes for the Capitol bill, but also for our committee bill today, since this is our committee's kind of first time with bills on the floor, like maybe especially for us new member, anything that we should know? Is there anything of like, how do we support each other? How do we support Sarah? Things we don't do, any guidance, would be helpful I so think we the, are ready yeah I think the thing is is to really watch the floor and that's hard to do on zoom but pay attention to questions that are being asked and pay attention to um Sarah if you're picking up that Sarah needs a little bit more backup um speak up and um the other thing too, quite often, you will see that a debate will go on for quite a while and then the chair of the committee will get up and speak. And that's to indicate we're good here, debate should cease, let's move on. That's what that indicates when a chair gets up like that. Or sometimes a chair will get up um, as the debate really begins to put it back on track. Um, because sometimes, particularly when there's a new member reporting, it's difficult for them to know all the nuances. And sometimes it can veer off track and the chair can bring it back for that. But I think Sarah's going to do fine. <laughs> I hope. I think. I appreciate your confidence and appreciate the committee paying attention, though, that like, you know, during the, if there, there are things um, that, you know, it'd be helpful to, for you to keep your screen on so I can see your faces. Yes. Um, that 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 would be helpful. And if and if there is a crazy question that you th it seems like I'm not able to answer, and you know the answer, you can text it to me. You know that's that's helpful too. But I think we I think we did good work, and I'm feeling pretty. Um, we'll see. We'll see what, if members have questions. If 
Yeah, we didn't have a caucus on this, so we don't know what people are feeling on it. Did you folks in the Republicans have a caucus on this? No. So we don't know what members are really thinking. Um, and I can't emphasize enough, we are out there as a team. We're out there as a committee. And if one of our members is starting to really get in trouble, we come to the rescue um, and help them. This is a whole committee and it reflects on the whole committee. What you'll find over time, and this is really hard in the Zoom world, but once we get back in the building and we are sitting there in the well, you will pick up a feel of committees that do good work and their bills are, um, and their reports are listened to and a committee vote carries a lot of weight on the floor. Um, and as committees, you have to earn that respect of your colleagues and you have to earn that your committee does good work. It's not an automatic. And once a committee has earned that, the committee work is a lot easier on the floor of the house because people trust that committee. And you will find some committees may not be trusted and you may find some committees are trusted highly. Um, and my goal has always been that we have a strong committee and we take care of each other on the floor and we, we do our due diligence in the committee and do our due diligence in taking testimony and arriving at the best language that we can with the information that we have. Um, and, and that goes a long ways when you're out there reporting a bill to 150 people because if they have faith in your committee, um, it makes your life a lot easier in the building. And not just on the House side, makes your life a lot easier on the Senate side as well. Because that's the other half of the process here. I'd, I'd stepped out for a second, Alice, to let the dog out. So I might have missed it. You might have said it. What day are you projecting we're going to be? I probably missed that because he was chomping the bit to get out. But Projecting we, what? To be, to be doing the, the actual, we thinking tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow okay. afternoon. We'll probably go first tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. Instead of the appropriations okay. bill, that's my hunch, because the appropriations bill is going to be at least a two hour presentation. Usually it's a five or six hours. And they're condensing it to about two hours. So I'd like to have hours done within half an hour at the most. That's my goal. I would think we could. So let's. Um, I'm not sure about tomorrow morning. You know, tomorrow morning, we need to see if there's any amendments on the calendar tonight. If there are amendments that are popping up, um, we will meet tomorrow morning. And we may have to meet at eight o'clock or 8.30 because we're on the floor. Is it 10 or 10.30? We have the joint session. 10.30. 10.30. Um, so we'll have to see where we are, if there's any amendments that pop up because if there are amendments, we will work as a committee, we'll bring the person or persons in who are um, proposing the amendment or amendments, if there are any, and we work through that. Um, sometimes we can work up uh, a resolution to the amendment. Sometimes the person's willing to withdraw the amendment. And sometimes we have to take a real vote on the amendment, whether we see it as favorable or unfavorable and then report that out to the floor. If there's an amendment that comes from the floor and we're not aware of it, we will have to recess and convene as a committee to go over the amendment. So just be prepared. I have no idea. I'll have, we'll have a better feel after the caucus today in terms of what's happening. So I'd like to break because we're in caucus at noon. Anything else before we finish up? Okay, and Michael, I quickly looked through. It looks okay. Yeah, I did it more uh, bill sent from the the bill language versus spreadsheet, but I think it accomplishes the same thing of what you were saying. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. So do make sure you have your bill next to you too, not just yeah. your spreadsheet. Yeah, I got both. Yep. Okay. Uh, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, do, do we have? Uh, I'm going to be referring to line numbers on the spreadsheet. Do we have a final spreadsheet of what it's going to be 
What they, just e they just emailed they just, it to us. They just sent it. They just, oh, okay. yeah, Bet Betsy and just sent it to us. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and I just heard that healthcare is submitting an amendment. It's. I don't think it's healthcare committee. I think it's a member. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we will work on that. Um, we'll probably work on that tomorrow morning. So plan on either 8 or 8.30. We're not there yet. Okay. And the amendments on the secure residential 16 beds. So that, that will be your section, Kurt. Some people don't give up. Nope, they don't. So we'll figure it yeah. out. And when we're when we're referring to the bill tomorrow, the, the capital bill, which which version should will we will we be using? So we get page numbers and line numbers, right? Well, I always use the larger version. Uh, good point, because I really need draft one point. We had draft one point six, right? Do we have 1.5 and 1.6? 1. 1. I haven't seen it. I have at least one. Is another one of 1.6 to print out? I printed it. Yeah, okay. it came through on Friday. Okay. Um, so, what I'm going to do is they let me see how it's. Let me. What is our number? H4 38. Eight, four, for the capital bill? Yeah. 438. Let's see how that goes. So they're going to have to um, go to the bill finder. And that is printed just like our draft 1.6. And it has the line numbers. That is just like our draft 1.6. So people are gonna be going off the large version that's electronic on the bill finder on the legislative webpage. So it's the same as our printed copy, copy and it has the same number of lines. Okay. So it's just as introduced on that page? Is that what the- Yes, as introduced, it's H438. What's that okay. bill number, 438? 438. 438. And then the spreadsheet that was sent out does have the item, does have the line numbers on it. Okay. So are we good to go folks? So we can have a little bit of a breather before we're on. Yep. Okay. Thanks. We're off of YouTube now. Thank you, folks. And we will see you. We're going to be at the caucus of the whole at noon to present our capital budget and then also the general fund budget.